So the regular form tool is this kind of blank Word document. The custom form tool allows you to build custom fields. So this is a electronic form, sometimes they're called. It's a web form. It's meant to be used on the internet. You can print the custom form tool. So same idea here. I could go to a PDF, and now it's launching PDF, and now this, this form's in, in a PDF. So don't worry about the fact that I'm saying it's a web tool. You can have these in, in a hard copy format if you need them. But they're best used electronically inside of Touchstone. So on the home screen functionality here, you can log in um, as a user. And if they're, they're assigned this referral process, they could access this form. So I'm going to show you that here in a second. But let's first talk about how to build a custom form. So this is an example of a custom form. This is what it used to look like. So this is the traditional form in the form tool. So just a flat form. In the custom form tool, it looks a little different. You can build it differently. So the reason I'm pointing this out is, if you have an existing form which is in Word and you've used it for 100 years that way, re-look at it. Because maybe you could make it more savvy, make it more into a web form, which would be more efficient and easier to use. So re-look at your forms and build them into custom forms. So we've got a short answer field, which is this is an example of that, when you've got a simple sentence or word short answer. Um, there are longer answer fields, and this is all drag and drop. Oops, this is all drag and drop, so I'm going to move this up. So you can see it at the top. This is more of a longer answer. It's called a paragraph. So I give it a title, and then I've got this. Um, when you go to fill this in, inside a touchdown electronically, it expands into like a page length if, people, if you need a further list of information, like notes, or someone types out a description of some kind. Um, there's checklist boxes like this. So I know we have a checklist tool, but this is more for something short and sweet. You know, as a part of a form, or it could stand alone, this checklist. Did you do this, this, and this? Check, check, check. There's a single answer field. So this is um, right here. It's called uh, multiple choice, where you can fill in um, the boxes. And then there's also a drop down, which I don't have um, a visual of right here. But these are all the features or the custom um, forms fields you can put into a custom form. So let's go and build one. So give it a name, just like you would the other tools. You can give it an objective, what the purpose of it is. When I hit short answer, I'm going to get this pop up. So this would be like something short, a name or a company name, employee name. And then when I save it, then it's put the title field in and given me a field for that short answer. If I wanted to go and edit this again, I just select it, and now I can edit it again. Paragraph, same idea. So this would be something longer, a longer explanation. So a question you're asking or um, a situation you're presenting and asking what happened. And then you hit Save. And then this provides a longer paragraph um, form for it to be completed. Multiple choice. So this is where you want someone to choose one of the answers. So you type in the question here, and then you give the choices. This wouldn't be A, B, and C, but it would be what are the choices, the drop-down choices. These can all be reordered just by dragging and dropping. If I want to delete a choice, I just hit this little negative sign here, and then it's gone. If I want to add another choice, this is C. And then I can add another one. You can add as many choices as you want. It keeps expanding down. And then I save it. And then the choices become these little circle box choices. Checklist, same idea. So this is choose one or multiple. And then you put in the same idea. What are the choices that they have? Save. Drop down is a little fancier. So use the drop-down. Um, I think when, when forms get really long, the drop-down can be helpful because it doesn't list them all. It just provides a drop-down. 
So this um, this would be for uh, drop down choices. Save again. I can add more or or delete them right here. So then this is what the drop down looks like. Oops. I'll move it up so you can see it. So this makes it a little smaller, especially if you have like 10 choices, then when you hit this little drop down, you it, it conserves space on the form. So once the form is built like this, again, you can print it right here, but I wouldn't recommend that. More, you can go over here, and let's go, I'm not sure if I have the, here it is. So here's that referral process. Let me start from the beginning. So this is the home screen. I have a control panel assigned right here. So a control panel is the place where you and your employees go to use processes, fill out checklists, fill out forms, mark things as complete. You can assign control panels over here in account administration. So I've got this control panel for manager of marketing and sales. So I select that position. And now I'm seeing a list of everything I'm accountable for as the manager of marketing and sales. This list is derived from the job description. So whatever processes you put on the job description over here is what's going to show up here. This looks a little different because I can make work groups like you're seeing here, employee training. So right up here I can create these groups and then move processes into it. These are the things I do at the end of the month, my management work. So here's that referral process. I select this. I'm taken to all the content for this process. So these are the work plans, the checklist, everything within it. This one's a little messy because I have all these things we added. But if there's a checklist, for example, I can go to this checklist. And then here I can save it as something, put in notes, fill it out, and save it back to Touchstone. The minute I save it, it date and time stamps it. And then if I go back over here, I can look in this folder and see it. It's right here, date and time stamped. If I had put a save as, like this one, it would show up there as well. I can look at everything I've completed in these folders, or I could go and run a report and see those things as well. But let's go down here to the custom form tool. So there it is here at the bottom. And if I select this, here's the form. Here's my drop-down choices, A, B, C. I can put in the name. This is the short, short answer, remember? This is the longer answer that gives me more space. This box can even be spread out to really long. Here's the multiple choice questions. Um, here's the checklist. So you'll notice with the multiple choice, you can only choose one. So this is one answer, whereas with checklist, I can choose multiple. And when I save it, it's saving it back to Touchstone. And if we go back here and look, in this completed folder, you'll see it right here. And I can go back to it and fill it out and look at it again. Next day, if I'm doing this one more time, all I do is go back to the form tool right here. And once I select it, now I've got another blank copy of this form. So these are electronic forms that you can begin to start using in Touchstone. Um, it makes it really easy to fill things out like this. Um, Employees can even do it from uh, their phones. We're currently working on a mobile app for it. Um, now they have to log into Touchstone on their phone and call up the form, which isn't a huge deal. But when we have the mobile app version done, which is going to be in a few, I think in another month or so, um, it'll just be easier and kind of cleaner to use on a phone. Let's look at another example of a custom form. This is a process called um, Product and Service Knowledge Base. So what this process is about is it's a whole set of information describing the products and services of a company. So this is a good kind of resource process to have where everything related to what you do, your services, your materials, your products, whatever it is that you do in your business, if you put all that information into one process, it becomes a resource center for employees. And when you hire a new employee, you can say, go to the knowledge base and study those processes. There can be product instructional videos in there that you've created or links to YouTube, whatever works for you. 
um, manuals on all your different equipment and tools and services, work plan descriptions. So someone's going to go through and study all this information and learn it. Maybe you, you give them two days of, of company time or you tell them to do it at home at night, whatever the situation is. At the end of that time, you're expected that they've studied and learned this. Then you can build a little test, and this is the custom form tool. So here's a form that's been built that's a test of this process. How do our services benefit our customers? And they have to answer that. Ha explain how service A is delivered to customers. How do you troubleshoot product B? What's the best product for commercial customers? So you can make these tests inside a touchstone and have the employee then go and, and complete the test. Now, if they wanted to, they could go back here and go through this material and find page 20 and maybe find the answer. But there's a value in that as well. Um, if you wanted to, you could build the test outside of the process in another process so that they couldn't refer back to the, the, the knowledge-based material. But in my opinion, and I've been a trainer for a long time, you, that's not necessary. Somebody is studying reams of information. If you ask the questions in a clever way, like how does this benefit, that's not answered directly. They have to come up with their own knowledge and understanding of what they've read and put it in their own words. So this is another great use of the custom form tool. They save this, the manager can go and run a report, review all the tests, go back to them and say, no, you didn't get this right or study this more or great, you pass, move on to the next one. Um, I think I have one more example of a custom form. One-on-one uh, -on -one meetings. We talked about this yesterday, or yesterday, last week. So this is the one-on-one -on -one meeting process where your manager is meeting one-on-one -on -one with the employee and they're reviewing their job description processes, they're talking about work that's going on, they're going through issues once a week, once a month, once a quarter at least. Um, so here's the agenda form as a custom form. So as a manager, I'd go into this agenda form. I put the employee's name, the date, items to discuss, goals from last period, goals from this period, things to resolve, notes, save it. So this is a tidier, kind of neat form for this. I can even go back and look at the form that I did last month and kind of have it side by side and then see the information for goals for last period and put it back into this one. Um, but this is a great use of the custom form tool because it's putting the, it's forcing the manager to create an agenda, which is, you know, important to do. And then it's storing that information back to Touchstone so that it can be referred to later, referred to by the manager, referred to by their manager. Um, and all that information can be run, um, create, run a report and, and get a list of those things that you can refer back to. So this is the custom form tool. As we go through the rest of the trainings, I'm going to be highlighting even more um, ways to use the custom form tool. 